Hello, welcome to this presentation, an advanced steel skill builder for customising your bills of materials. My name is Alec Giles, I'm a structures consultant at Greytech in the UK and I'm also an expert elite for Autodesk. I originally did my apprenticeship as a mechanical design engineer around 30 years ago, moved into support and training after 10 years of designing machinery and I've been at Greytech focusing 100% on advanced steel since 2010. Why should Greytech be your partner for business? Well, we believe we're unique in having software and services covering the full life cycle of your product. First of all, you design your product using Autodesk software and enhanced with Greytech power packs that makes Greytech create. Then you need to check your design will work in the real world using Greytech state-of-the-art simulation and analysis software in Greytech Simulate. Then Greytech Fabricate can help you manage your workshop to actually manufacture the design and managing everything from the materials to the staff and the NC machinery and then all the data and all the files created by all of that work can be controlled using Greytech Manage and our OpenTree software to look after all your work in progress data. This particular webinar is focusing on how to adjust your templates for the bills of materials or parts lists in Advanced Steel. So when you install Advanced Steel you get quite a lot of templates given to you. Those are good examples and quite a lot of customers are perfectly happy with those examples and never need to do anything to them. But there are a few issues with those supplied templates that you might find annoying and want to fix. But you're also not only limited to those templates, you can actually make your own templates and customise them and adjust what they show and it's quite easy to do so. So I'm going to give you some information on that today. So specifically we're going to look at general things about how to customise the lists, general rules, general ideas, uh, so you know what you can play with and how to do it. Uh, making or understanding the field content, there's quite a lot of fields or properties that are quite cryptic so I'm just going to try and demystify some of that. What these known issues are, I mentioned earlier with the existing templates, there's some issues there that you might want to fix. Uh, getting the sorting of templates correct or the data on the f lists and adding formulas to your lists. So there's plenty of information there and we don't want to be on too long for today because it's a trying to be a short skill builder so you know, let's move on promptly. So the general what you're doing, how do you customise your lists? Well the first thing is you start off by going to the output ribbon document manager panel and click on the bomb editor icon. That will get you into the interface where you can customise your lists. At the top right of that new interface called the bomb editor you'll see a folder structure or tree structure and that has three branches at the top it's got advanced templates user templates and project templates the ones you want to edit will be found under user templates so always look under there and you're going to want to go to bomb or derived documents if you're on the uk build everything i say will be based on the uk build if you want to make a new list select the one you like to copy you can't make a brand new one from scratch you have to copy an existing one so find one you like closest to what you want and select it and then you right click on the name and say copy template and then you'll see that second box on the right where you can choose there the new name for the new list and whether you're adding it to the user database or a project specific database but why you want to make new lists for every project I can't understand so it's going to be on the user database you want to add it to Okay, so that'll get you a new list you can play with and customise as you wish. Once you've got the new list or a list to edit, you'll see in the main area of the um, interface that it's split into a number of different areas. So you can see here, you've got report header, page header, group header, detail, group footer, page footer, report footer. You might have others, but never ever mess about or interfere with that structure because that's fundamental to how the lists operate. If you change anything there, you're going to break it. Also, all the different 
boxes or fields within that structure. You can see the logo is highlighted there. Never move them from one part of the structure to another because again you'll break things. You can only work within each section at one section at a time. Don't mess about or shuffle it about. You might also notice, it's worth mentioning at this stage, that lists are grouped in different ways. This one's grouped by the section name, uh, the UK material list. So all of a given section is listed together and then summarised. Other ones are grouped by section type, so straight beams, curved beams, plates, or it might be grouped by uh, other items like bolts, then anchors, or whatever. You can't change that. It's impossible as a user to change that. It's hard coded in the software. Not even we can change it. You have to, if you want a group a list that's grouped in a certain way, try and find one that already is. Even if the content is totally different, if it's already grouped by section size or it's already grouped by object type copy that one and then reformat everything else. You cannot change how a list is grouped. Also, something that catches me out every day, if you're editing these things, I've got that box selected there with the logo. If I want to deselect that logo, I can't. I, in AutoCAD, you would hit escape, or in Advanced Steel, you select something, you hit escape to deselect it. If you hit escape in the bomb editor, it will close the bomb editor completely and you'll lose the changes you just did. So do not hit escape. If you want to, you can't deselect, you just have to go and select something else. It catches me out all the time. Once you've selected the actual element you want to play with, then you look at the bottom right of the interface and you'll see a list of the properties. So here we have the logo selected and here's all the properties showing at the bottom right for the logo. Specifically for a logo, a lot of people, the only thing you ever want to change is the logo. You want to put your company logo in, Apart from that, you're happy with what's provided to you. Absolutely fine, nothing wrong with that at all. And if that's all you need to change, then just select the logo as I have there. And in the properties, you'll find a line called image. When you select that line, you have a tiny button with three dots on the right hand side. If you click on that button, then you can browse and select any image you like on disk. And that image you select will become your logo. The only uh, qualifier there is that the image file size must be less than around 220k. 200, 218, 220, you just about get away with 220. If you go above that you probably won't, it will, might show but it will refuse to save. And then the last rule is, or general rule, is whenever you've finished editing your template, so I've changed the logo, I've shuffled things about, I've done whatever I want to do, you must go to the top left and you'll see a save icon there you must save that template before you switch to another template. So if you want to change logo on 20 templates, change logo, save, next one, change logo, save. Must remember to keep it in the save button. It does prompt you if you forget. Nearly every other box on the list is a text box. So you can see I've highlighted on here, you can just see the sort of shading around the edge of it. So it's a text box. So there are all lots of little individual boxes with text in them. You can resize those boxes using these grips. So you can see I've circled them in red here, these little white boxes. If you hop, click and drag on those, you can resize the box. Or if you're just off that, you can reposition the box. So you can move the boxes around, change the size. If you want to put a frame around it, like for the heading of the list or something, you can right click on the box and in the menu you choose format border and you'll get a little dialog up where you can play with different styles of frame on each edge of the box. If you look in the box and read the text then if it does not start with an underscore, so all the text in blue here for example, as long as it doesn't start with an underscore <coughs> then you can simply double click in the box and type anything you like. So I might change it from material list to parts list. So I mean, just double click, what delete material type parts. No problem with that, do anything you want. But when the text does start with an underscore, or and ends with an underscore, like the text in green here, if you're for file of extract client, name of project, then that is special text that advanced deal will replace that text with the actual values when the list is created. So like we have tokens in labels and we have tokens on title blocks on prototypes, this, these are tokens for use in builds materials. So you must not ever 
just type in those boxes. If they start and end with an underscore, you can, must, to change what property you show in that box, you right click on the box and you choose field content from the menu. And then you get the choice of all the available properties that you can show in that box. Field content, oh yes, I said I was gonna explain that. Let's have a look at what you might get there. There's a huge number of properties you could show in those boxes. The properties available will vary depending on which part of the report you're in. If you're in the header and you right click on a box and go field content, you might get 20 or 30 properties like project title, um, designer, cold roll customer, client, and so on. But if you're in the details line, you'll get properties applying to any type of the objects in the model. And when you combine all the different types of object and all the properties for each one, you've got a long list available there. You might have, might be 200, I haven't counted. But sometimes those in the list take a bit of understanding. The list is so long, you've got a filter at the bottom here. So if I start typing weight, W-A-E-I, whatever, then it filters that list to only runs with the word weight in them. You think weight, well weight's just gonna be weight, but no, look, how many have we got there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen different types of weight. What? Thirteen different weights? What are you on about? Well let's try and demystify that. If you start looking carefully at those, you'll see some patterns. First of all, you've just got something or other weight. Main part weight. Global weight. Assembly weight. These are just the rough weight of the objects. So for a beam, that's just the length of the beam times the weight per meter. It doesn't include any notches, doesn't calculate any holes or do anything about those. It's just a nominal length times the mass per meter. So that will always give you a rough weight, which will be a little bit high possibly. Then you get exact weight. So main part, total exact weight. Uh, uh, global exact weight. Exact weight does calculate all the notches, all the holes, any other cuts, and subtracts those from the actual weight. So that will give you the actual exact weight of the object. That's the more accurate one, but maybe depending on what you're doing, if you're buying raw material and you want the weight of the raw material, you really need to be using the rough weight, not the exact weight. So uh, it's up to you which one's more appropriate, but the exact weight will always be a little bit lower than the rough weight. There's one here that just says weight. That's it. That is the weight for one item on that line in the table. One part usually. Then you've got things like total weight. Total weight for part or main part total weight. That's multiplying the weight of one object by however many of that object you've selected. So you've got 12 base plates at 30 kilos each. That would be total weight for part would be 360 kilos. When it says main part, I think they're getting a bit confused with their terminology, but main part is an assembly. So these are the weights for the assembly, a whole welded fabrication, as opposed to a single object. And then to really confuse, you've got another property there called assembly weight, but that doesn't mean one assembly, that actually means the weight for the entire lot or phase. So if you have four base plates in lot one and eight base plates in lot two, this will only give you how many are, the total weight for how many are in lot one, or whichever lot it is that's showing on that line. And then finally you've got global weights there, and that's for the entire model. So however many of that part, however many lots and phases there are, how many, you know, how that base plate, you've got 28 of those in the whole model, that's the weight for all 28. So however many of that object in the entire model. So you've got the different variations in there. Combine those different names together and you get all those different combinations. But that's what each name means. It's the same kind of thing applies to paint and maybe one or two others. But those are general rules. If you know those rules, you can decipher a lot of the other properties in the list as well. That will refer to those terms. It still might be a bit confusing and you might be looking for like the surface area of a part and you think area is going to do it but the area won't do it it's a special thing the area property in fact so you might want to look at other tokens or other lists that do something similar 
I can't find the area on this one, but I know Materialist gives me the area. What on earth does that use for the total area of the whole model at the bottom, or for the total surface area of all beams? What does that token? Oh, I see. For a start, it's called Paint, not Area. And oh, I see, it's using Assembly Paint or something like that. Right, if that uses Assembly Paint, I'll use Assembly Paint in my box, and you probably will be okay. So you need to look at other existing lists to see what tokens they use as well to help you out to figure out which property goes where. A lot of the others are obvious like part numbers and materials and grades and things. Okay, material is called grade, not material. So I mentioned there are some known issues. So those are the general things you can do. You can use that to edit the list and muck them around. You can put extra columns on tables, squeeze up the boxes you got, space them out a bit more, put an extra column in as you wish. But uh, even before you do any of that and customise a whole brand new list, there are some known niggles with the existing templates provided in the box. Talking about the UK build here. So you might want to fix some of these little niggles. They're not the end of the world. You may have, may not have noticed them, but I suggest you fix them. First of all, the sorting. A lot of the lists are not sorted into order properly. Like uh, the, in this case, the UK bolt erection list, the sequence seems to be random. The UK assembly list, the assemblies are in random order. It's not very nice. So it's nice to sort them into order. I'll show you how in a minute. The part number. If you use the, not the UK ones, but the material list or material list summary, plates list, beamless straight or beamless curved from the parts lists page or group folder. Those ones have a strange habit. If you have a rafter, say R1, instead of listing the beam in the middle as M1001 and then all the bits and pieces welded to it, F1001, F1002, it lists the beam as R1. So you're looking on your bill of materials or on your list for, where's M1002? It's not on the list, what's going wrong? It's because it's listed as R1, which is really confusing. So if you don't like that, you want the part, you the parts list, it's supposed to be listing them as part numbers, not assembly numbers. That's because they've got the wrong token in there for the number. So in the part number column, they're using the token, um, just part mark, and you should change it to single part mark. I'll show you that in a minute. One or two of the lists have boxes that are a bit small and the object in the box has to have a long description. Particularly some bolts and gratings have long descriptions and if the column is a bit too narrow to fit the whole long description in so it tends to truncate and you lose the end of the description it's not good so you want to edit that to allow more space for the full description to show. And finally not every list includes everything you think it will. So you might need to be careful and check what a given list is going to show you and what it's going to include to make sure that when you print a set of lists you are actually including everything from your structure. So I'll give you examples of each of these now or how to fix each of those issues. Sorting of the lists, like I say the UK loading list, UK assembly list and probably others are not really sorted into order. They just seem to appear in a random sequence which isn't very clever. To fix that, you find the heading of the section that's relevant. So if you want to sort the detail section, you right click on the detail heading. In this case, for these two lists, it's the group headers you need to sort. So details empty. So go onto the group header and right click on the heading and choose sorting. You'll need to do this for header one and header two. Once you do that sorting, you get a box like this come up and it shows you the properties you can choose from on the left. You want to make sure the correct property is on the right. That's the ones you're going to result, sort by. You see the arrow there before the name pointing up? That means I'm sorting in ascending order. If you double click on it, it will go down and you're sorting into descending order. Z to A rather than A to Z. Um, you can put more than one quantity, more than one field in this right hand list and you can sort by uh, say section size and then by part number for example. Um, that's fine. Now there's another thing here, for especially for the UK assembly list. The detail line 
on the UK assembly list isn't empty, it's got properties, it's going to list the assemblies and then it's going to list all the parts inside each assembly. So on the detail line you want to put an extra box on the end of the line and set the property in that box doing field content, set it to is main part element. So the prop token is or properties is main part element. That always equals a zero or a one. And then in the properties on the bottom right hand corner of the area with that box selected, set the visibility to say visible is not false. So it's not actually visible. It doesn't show up anywhere on your bill of materials. But even though you can't see it, the value is only a naught or one. So if you sort it descending, add it to the column here for sorting and make it descending, then that will put the main part first under each assembly. So instead of having an assembly saying a haunch and it's got uh, not a haunch, a rafter, and it lists a couple of haunches, an end plate, oh, then the beam, then another haunch, and then another little stiffener, and then a cleat. It's nice to have the beam first, so the main part first. So if you do this, put in the extra hidden field is main part element, make it visible false. So you'll get the main part as the first one. So the beam M1002 will be the first, and then it lists all the plates there for this, that, and the other. And that can help a lot for these things. The correct part number, like I say, some of them, particularly the ones on the parts list page, seem to have this strange habit of listing the assembly number instead of listing the beam as a part number. They use a token that tries to be a bit clever. The token they use, if the object being listed is the main part of an assembly, the token shows the assembly number. If it's an attached part, it shows the part number. But that's confusing. We probably want it just, it's meant to be listing parts that always show the part number. So to fix that, you find the part mark field, the first column on the detail line, in this case. Go to field content. And instead of part mark, which is the one it starts off with, you need to change that. That's the one that tries to be clever and just keeps switching between main assembly and single part number. You want to go down to uh, can't even see it. So part uh, single part mark is just off the off the bottom. There it is. Single part mark. Can't see if you're looking in the long list. So you choose that one and that forces it to be the number of the part, not try and be clever and guess which number I want. So if you change the token to that, you'll always get them listed as the correct one. There's another one, main part number, higher up. And that will always give the assembly number if that's what you wanted. So I suggest you fix that. Now I said occasionally things, especially with bolts or gratings, the box can be a bit small. If you look at this list, uh, it doesn't look too bad, but oh look, hang on, look more carefully. It's missing the end of that description there, it's sort of M24 by 70, uh, ugh, what was meant to come after that? It's got a dash, but I don't know what's meant to come in. So to fix that or rectify that, if you select the line in the template, so you'll have one of those text boxes, select that box in the template, and then the properties on the bottom right, there's one of them called multi-line. Find that property multi-line and set it to true. It's always set to false originally. Set it to true. And then when necessary, that box will grow to show more than one line if the text won't fit in the width of the box. So suddenly I've got the dash and I've got the 8.8 .8 for the material, the grade of the bolt is now visible. On next line. Otherwise, I don't know if it's an 8.8 .8 or a 10.9 or what, but now I can see. And it only grows when it needs to, so the other lines that didn't need run out of space, it hasn't made them all double height, it's only making this line double height. So that's the easiest way just to make it so you can definitely get the full description every time. Set the multi line property to true. The report contents. You might assume that okay well I don't need anything fancy I just have the material list and the bolt and anchor list so I know the material list lists all the parts and then the bolt and anchor does the bolts yep lovely I've got everything I need well you could well be wrong there you may not have everything you need at all you need to look a bit deeper and a bit more carefully because not every list lists everything you might guess for example the UK material list does not list gratings out of the box so if you had gratings in your model 
and you assumed you had everything listed, you wouldn't have. You have to go and produce a grading list separately at the moment. But you might want to change that. Say, well, I don't want to have to do a separate list in case I got gratings or whatever. Just everything except nuts and bolts I want on the material list. So to do that, what you do, you choose the template, as always, go to the template. But here, you can just see at the top there, I've got the, that's the name of the list in the tree. So I'll go into the tree structure, the folder structure, pick the list I want. So the main template comes up. But don't ignore the template and right click on the name in the folder structure. You have to be right click on the name. And then you can choose report contents from the menu. And that will bring up this dialog box. That's scrolled across so I've shown you the whole long list and in this dialog box you can tick the items you want to list on that bill of materials so you've got obvious things straight beams curved beams plates and so on special parts grating is slipped off the end there so you have to scroll right for that that won't be ticked originally on the UK materialist so it'll ignore all the gratings so just be careful and make sure you do list everything you want to list a couple of uh, cryptic ones here, things like bolts or anchors. You might hear, see here we've got bolts, side bolts and exploded bolts. What's going on there then? What's that mean? You might think, well, I'll just take bolts and that'll give me all I need. Actually, that'll probably give you next to nothing because that what it really means, shop bolts. The one you want to list most of what's in your model will be sight bolts. But you probably need to most occasions I think you probably want to tick both of them ticked just in case unless you really want shop bolts and sight bolts on different lists but I wouldn't have thought so the exploded bolts or exploded anchors same goes for anchors the exploded anchors uh, option or exploded bolts goes with the first two so you have to be listing either bolts or sight bolts just ticking exploded bolts won't list anything at all so once you're listing one or other of those, or both, the exploded bit means it will list each nut and washer separately. If exploded bolts is not ticked, you get a description of something like uh, XRX 20 by 45 standard, where standard means standard assembly, or um, XRX 24 by 60 tapered which means it's a tapered washer assembly but what's that what does that mean you have to know what that means there has to be a key or a definition somewhere on the bill of materials as to what these strange assemblies mean if you take the exploded bolts or exploded anchors it doesn't do that it just says xrx m24 by 70 and then you get a separate line saying m24 washer and a separate line saying m24 nut when it calls up the right quantities of nuts and washers individually so whichever way you like it it's up to you but uh, expl the exploded is in addition to the others to say it lifts the nuts and washes separately. And then you look on this list and there's other ones that are a bit strange. You've got things here like beams with saw cuts or beams with holes. Those are a subset of straight beams. So straight beams will list all the straight beams, whether it's got holes, cuts or not. But you could say, I'm only interested in the ones for uh, that need to go on the mitre saw, so I'll only list the ones with saw cuts. Or I'm only interested in the ones that the guy on the uh, drill, need to, pillar drill, needs to work with. So I'll only go, make a special list that only lists beams with holes, and then he can do just those. And he doesn't care about the other beams. So you can't have both beam, straight beams and beams with holes both ticked at once one is a subset of the other but then you got to watch out because curved beams you might think curved beams would be a subset of beams but it isn't called beams it's called straight beams there's not one there just as all beams so you need straight beams and curved beams are two separate things you need both of those ticked to once if you want every beam in your model whereas like I said, the other, some are mutually exclusive so just experiment a little bit but just be doubly sure that you've set your lists up to include everything you want and whatever you see also with the drawings you've got things like you can have just single part drawings just assembly drawings just ga drawings you can have just the issued drawings or just the not issued drawings so you've got various choices with drawings and things as well right that's fixing the known issues that we mentioned 
got one more tidbit for you today and this is how you can use formulas on your lists why on earth would you want to use a formula on your list well one example that's not uncommon would be to have maybe spares for objects so you cannot use the formulas to give you a total if I've got a column for weight I can't say uh, it's not like Excel I can't use a formula of sum of this column or total this column that doesn't work you got special fields or special properties and tokens for that like the global exact weight or the uh, assembly exact weight for the total of that lot or phase so you can't do totals with it but the formulas can do other things so the formulas might be great for doing spares on the bolts list for example so we all do exactly the right number and then somebody drops one from the rafters and falls in the mud you never find it again you'd have to go off and have a problem you have to go and order a new lot so you probably want to order a few spares so we're going to do that what you can do you select the quantity field in wherever bomb it is so this will be on our bolt and anchor list select the quantity field in the detail line and go to field content and then in the property list here instead of choosing quantity you choose formula and then in this little box at the top here when you type it in you've got a little arrow and you click on that little arrow and you can choose between operators and operands the operands are the properties you might want to manipulate and then operators are just times divide plus or minus you might need another box with a plain ordinary quantity in so you might need because sometimes the operands don't only show what's already on that section so if you're in the details I would need a box in details called quantity uh, using the quantity token that I would say is not visible perhaps and then I could put in a formula go to that tip and choose quantity then you can type the times or go to the list and choose operators times and then in this case I've multiplied by 1.05 so it's adding 5% and if you only got three or four and well, a small number of bolts that's not even going to add up to one so I'm adding a whole, an extra one just to be sure you get at least one spare because otherwise unless you're up to about 20 you're not even going to get any extras so I quantity which is the code for the quantity token times 1.05 plus 1 will give you what you want you could if you can work that out you need to look in the ordinary quantity field you'll see it called I quantity in the properties on the right you can just type that directly in to the field you want in here so you can work it out but uh, the official way is to pick them using this arrow at the top and picking them off the menus so something like that spares on your bolt list uh, is probably the most common one that's uh, a nice way of doing it so as you can see it's fairly straightforward to customize your lists in many ways it's easy to adjust what values are in which boxes you can easily change and resize the boxes and shuffle them around and copy your own lists to make your own versions for whatever you need and make them look prettier just experiment with those properties on the right if you do a copy as long as you're working on your own copy of the list you can experiment to your heart's content and then just ignore it if you don't like it or delete it again if you don't like it once you've finished making a list and you say right well, you know I'm happy with that template I want to use that template and you know I want that to be one I'm going to be using going forwards or even if you just even just to test it you want to be able to see it and use it easily well to test them as you're going along what you should do is go instead of using the bomb templates palette is do create lists the big icon for create lists create a bomb extract and go through uh, bomb extract next create lists and that will take you to the bomb editor you can pick a template off the bomb editor and say use and then go and choose your extract if you've got a UK training manual then that's in the UK training manual how to do that under creating lists for big models it is topic number 20.3 creating lists for large models in the UK training manual if you don't have one of those then uh, try it it's not too difficult you'll probably see more information online as well if you click the create lists button and then go for the help 
But uh, if you want to get it on your palette, so easy use in future, or even just to experiment with, what you need to do. At the tree structure at the top right, the folder structure again, you select the folder itself this time, not the bomb template, you select the folder itself. And then in the left or the main big window where you did have the template showing, you'll now have a list of all the different uh, templates in that category. You see there saying copy of UK assembly list, so maybe I've been experimenting there. Make sure you tick it. The template, the, not the template, the palette, the bomb templates palette will only show whichever lists you have ticked here. So you can, instead of having 20 showing and you only ever use three of them, you can untick all the rest and it'll only show the three you use. But if you're trying to make a new one, tick it so it does show on the palette and then you should be okay. But then after you've ticked, checked which ones are ticked or not ticked, close the bomb editor. Make sure the bomb templates palette is actually properly closed, not minimized down to its title bar or in a stack or hidden away somewhere, but actually fully closed the palette and then restart advanced deal. And when you restart advanced deal, it will then rebuild that palette as long as it was properly closed. It'll rebuild the palette and next time you go in, you can go to the user page because obviously it's the user ones we're changing. So switch the flag to a man at the top and under structured lists, you'll see your, or whichever folder, you'll see your new template listed on the palette there. And you can click on the button on the palette to use it easily. So remember, you have to change that flag at the top of the palette to a man. So get it to the user templates, not the advanced templates. Otherwise you'll still be getting the original Autodesk ones. And that's it. Right. So short and sweet. As always, I could go into a lot more depth. There's all sorts of things, more things we can show, but we haven't got time today. We might do a part two in future, maybe. Watch this space. But uh, there's plenty more I could go into. But that's a quick introduction to customising and editing your bombs. I uh, hope the, that's been helpful and useful to you. You can go off and have a play. Some of the deeper stuff it requires a lot of specialist knowledge. Even I struggle with some of it. But this should be enough to get you off and running. So I hope you found that useful. And you can enjoy now tweaking and adjusting your lists to be more to your liking or show the information you want. Uh, that's my content finished today. Thank you very much. I will now hang around. If you've got any questions for me, you can type them into the uh, go to webinar interface in the chat or the question window and I'll do my best to answer them. You can download this presentation as a handout. If you look in the handouts panel, you should be able to see it there and download it to keep a copy for yourself.